homeschoolers, how are you doing today? So this week we're going to be working on another Piet Mondrian. If you were in class on Thursday last week, you would remember that we made our first Piet Mondrian and we learned about the style called Distill. And that is where you use the three primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and then also black, white, and gray to make a piece of art. And in that, I did not let you use any diagonal lines. They were all cube-isms. Everything was a straight line. And we're going to be doing that again today, but I will let you sneak a couple diagonal lines in there if you feel you must. I am making mine like the Boogie Woogie Broadway right there because I want to. <laughs> and I am measuring out all of my lines. I'm making sure they're really straight. I recommend you do this too. Find a ruler, make sure you're making actually straight lines. It'll make your picture look so much better at the end if your lines are actually straight. You can do what I'm doing and just draw a, mark out a piece of your paper to do the art on, or you can use your entire piece of paper. Totally up to you. So here I am just marking everything out. I have no plan. I'm just doing it and hoping for the best. I'm drawing really lightly, you'll see, um, because you cannot erase your pencil once you put watercolor on it. So I do it really lightly the first time, and then you will see that I go over it with an eraser. I don't erase it all the way, but I erase it mostly so it's just kind of faded and I'm actually going to tape out my square here because I don't want <laughs> to get outside the lines here I want to make sure I have a really nice clean edge so that my white area continues to be white all right guys here we go there are color limits for this I'm not going to make you just use red yellow and blue if you don't want to but you do have to choose a color scheme to use there are four you may choose from and each one of them has three colors in it so you have primary colors you have secondary colors you have cool tones and you have warm tones and then of course you have the ones that everyone can use, black, gray, and white. So, do you remember what your primary colors are? Red. And red is also a warm tone. The next primary color, can you guess it? Sit with me, orange. It's actually a secondary color. See, I did it too. It's a warm tone though. It's a secondary color because yellow and red make orange. So yellow is a primary color because nothing can make it. And then that is our last warm tone also. So our next secondary color is green. And that's our first cool tone. Do you remember what colors make secondary colors? Yellow and blue. Blue is our final primary color and it is our next cool tone. And then our last secondary color is doo -doo -doo -doo, purple. I, this purple is just so dark. I haven't figured out how to use it correctly yet, but this is purple going to add another purple into it to kind of make it a little bit more purpley. There we go. And then everyone can use these last three colors. White. And I'm going to mix my gray right here on the palette. a little bit more white to make the gray that I like 
and then black. These are our neutral tones that we're using. So, white, gray, and black everyone can use. Here's the thing, guys. There's primary. There's secondary. There's cool tones. There's warm tones. And you have to choose one of those. You have to choose one set of three colors. And then you get to use white, gray, and black regardless. Guys, I know this is just part of rule following. You have to figure it out. All right, let's get started painting. Can you guess which color scheme I'm using? My first color I'm using is red. And I, at this time, don't really have a plan for what I'm doing. I just know that I really don't want two reds right next to each other. I don't want the colors to be right next to each other if they're the same. So not two reds, not two blacks. I want them spread out a little bit. And I am using a flat brush. So the, my brush head looks like a square. It helps me get those lines a lot cleaner. And I'm using quite a, big, quite a bit of paint. Not a lot of water, just enough water to make it like a nice thick paint, but not too runny. Um, this is so that my colors can be really, really vibrant. Oh, so this is the color. Yellow. What do you think my next color, my last color is gonna be? Do you think it's gonna be blue so I have primary colors? Or do you think it's gonna be orange so that I have warm colors? Just putting all my yellow in where I want it. A couple last bits of yellow here. It's always good to kind of take a minute and look at what you're doing to make sure that where you're putting things is where you actually want them to go. There's a couple blocks here that as I'm looking at it right now, I'm not sure what color I want it to be. So I'm just gonna leave them blank until I know for sure. And here's my third color. It's orange. Now I know that right now it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the orange and the yellow. And eventually this does start to really bother me. <laughs> I haven't quite figured out how I like my warm colors on this palette yet because quite frankly, I don't use warm colors very often. I stick with cool tones or primary colors most often. So this is kind of stretching me out of my comfort zone, which is why I chose it. I think it's always good to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone so that you can learn something new. Play with a new palette color, play with your new paints, try a different medium. You gotta try new things, gotta try new styles. Maybe if you always draw one thing, you should try something different. So here I am going to mix up my gray color. Um, I'm using this little plastic piece of plastic insert that I have, and I'm just gonna add it in a few places that I like. Now, in these really thin places, it's important you're using a small brush because if you use a big, chunky brush for tiny places, you're going to make a mess. It's just, it's going to happen. That's how it works. Big, chunky things in very small places make a big mess. And I'm also making sure that my paints are dry before I paint next to them because I would hate to have some bleeding issues. So I'm going to put some more gray in. I'm not quite sure yet where I want it all. But I'm really happy with this color of gray. My palette doesn't come with gray, so I have to mix it myself, which is perfect. Mixing your own colors and learning what your, how your paints work is a really fun thing to do. All right, so next I'm going to do black, and I actually decide for my black and you use a much smaller paintbrush. It's like teensy weensy little paintbrush. It's about the size of a pin tip, but I wanna make sure that I get really clean edges with the black because if you're not careful with your black, it will just bleed everywhere. <laughs> it will be a complete mess. 
So as you can see, I'm being super careful. Well, you can't really see because my hand is in the way. Good job, Emily. But I'm also making sure my black is nice and thick, that the paint is nice and thick so that I don't have to worry about it being too light and looking kind of gray. I really want it to just stand out really nicely. I'm just choosing the last places that I want gray, gray and black and white to be. I've kind of decided that I don't want any giant, like super giant black spaces, except for this one. I just, I want to have a nice balance of black and white so that it gives it some air and the picture doesn't look too heavy. I'm really loving how this is turning out. And now I'm actually going to go in with white paint. I know that sounds silly, but my paint is slightly um, shiny. So it you'll be able to see that there's paint on it. All right, there we go. So what you didn't see me do <laughs> is I actually went back in and gave all of my colors a second coat because I was unhappy with how the yellow and the orange looked almost the same. So I just added more color to them to make them contrast a little more. Contrast means um, just making them look a little bit more different. And now I'm going in with a pen and I'm adding lines in between each of my colors. You do not have to do this. I just prefer the way my paint looks when there's a nice clean edge in between each of my colors. Um, I actually realized that some of my paint was still a little bit sticky. Sorry, my face got really close there. Um, my paint was still kind of sticky and I kept ruining my pens because I wasn't being patient. So I have to just take a break and put my pen away pretty soon. Yep, I'm frustrated. And I ended up going through with my Posca paint pen. And I'm going to go along the edge because I want a nice, clean edge line. Yep, just like that. I wouldn't recommend doing it like this unless you have a really steady hand, which I only do sometimes. But let's, uh, I decided, <laughs> this is so silly, that I want to cut this out when I'm done. So I put a pencil line around the edges. But you want to know what's silly about that? Is I could have just done it straight on the paper. But no, nope, I didn't. I didn't think of that because I didn't know until just now that I wanted to cut it out. So here we go. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Look how pretty it looks. And I'm going to add, see, I made my life way too difficult. I'm gluing my corners back on. Uh, the things you don't know when you just don't plan anything out, man. Had I planned this out, I would have first saw this, but I didn't. So I'm gluing my corners back on and here's when I realized that I could have just done it straight the first time and I'm signing it because it's my art. Mm -hmm. 